Okay, here we go. First look at the Ditto Gear Omni Slider. <laughs> you know, it's not often that my first reaction on unboxing a new tool is, wow, she's pretty. But that was my first reaction to the Ditto Gear Omni Slider. It immediately impresses you with the care and attention to detail in its design, but then you start noticing its industrial build. I mean, the XLR connectors, the weatherproof motor housing, and the very simple ergonomic controller. I mean, three inputs, a clickable joystick and two dials, uh, one for speed and one for damping, all lead you down into a very well thought out, very logical menu. Like setting it up, um, real simple, basically three operations. You choose your device, in this case it's the Omni Servo. Go up, choose your length. I happen to have gotten the 1.5 meter version. And then you calibrate it. Um, by this you move the trolley to the uh, end of the rail opposite the motor housing and that registers uh, everything so the controller knows where the cart is later on during your operations. I mean down to a, a millimeter. And that's it. Then you can go up to, say, video mode and free ride, which was one of the things I was really looking for. Um, my previous device didn't have the ability to free ride to, um, what do you want to call it, move in real time or in adjusted time. One thing I did notice, though, was how small the cart was. Uh, with a three-inch rail, the cart is actually a little bit smaller than that. And even with that cool, you know, captured bearing type guide, I wondered if it was strong enough or if it was going to be too sensitive to off-balance loads. So I tested it out by throwing basically my shoulder rig on there, um, you know, 24 to 70 on a D7000 with a DP4 monitor, and she seemed to be okay. I mean, she slid smoothly, she stopped smoothly, she moved back and forth at command, and I didn't see any quivers. And that was really, you know, really evident in this first test shot of Natasha. Look at her eyelashes, very smooth. Well, I wanted to push it a little bit further, so I added a whip to the follow focus and tried this counter focus move um, tracking the focus of that pin back while the cart moved in the opposite direction to see if I transferred any motion uh, to the video and it doesn't appear to be any there did it again with a you know a simple rising um, escalator shot and a rack focus here now I was really torquing the whip back and forth as you can see, when the focus shifts back to Natasha and abruptly stops, her eyelashes don't quiver a bit. Racking it back again, um, the cat whiskers look great. So I'm starting to get impressed. I mean, it's really stable. But what about vertical moves? Uh, you know, I've had some problems with my manual and my motorized sliders when I put a decent amount of gear on it, getting non-stuttering uh, vertical moves. Well, in the Ditto Gear commercial, you see the, um, the free weights on there, and it shows how it slides up smoothly. So I decided to try my own version of that by putting a DP6 on a Nikon D7000 with a 24 to 70, a matte box, a follow focus, um, the rail system off my shoulder rig, uh, an Acrotec ball head attached to a Dromos from Cinevate with the 100 millimeter bowl and ball. That's a pretty decent load. I mean, what are we looking at here? About 15 pounds? And visually, looking at it really close, um, I wasn't seeing any stutter at all. I mean, according to the specs, it's 
capable of moving a hell of a lot more up and down, but they don't say anything about a load that's cantilevered out like this. If if that captured bearing trolley was going to stutter at any time, look at this load. I mean, it's out there a ways. It's obviously more cantilevered than I needed to be um, to get camera clearance from the rail, but it's silky smooth. I mean, direction changes, no stutter. There was no transfer of movement, as you can see in this little shot of Sven, one of my other light test dummies. His eyelashes, watch his eyelashes. I mean, directional moves, abrupt starts and stops, they're fine. This is going to be great. I mean, the possibilities here are boy, the doors are just opening up. The next thing I wanted to test out uh, on this first look was something called motion recording. The Omni slider gives you the ability to record up to 80 seconds of motion. And by that we mean, you know, moves, starts, stops, pauses, even speed changes and dampening changes during your motion. And then play it back as either real-time, slow-mo, um, time lapse in continuous or drive shoot drive like I did here. I mean I shot that watch and then came back and using their built-in intervalometer I did a, a time lapse. We'll get into the intervalometer in part two but I was really impressed with how easy it was to do. I mean basically you come down into motion recording you make the move that you want to record as you can see, it's, you know, the number spinning there. You can change speed, change dampening, change direction, and it continually records. Now, it only stores one recording in memory. So you have to, you know, make your move and then go ahead and play it back immediately after. You don't want to go off and, and record something else and think you're going to have four or five things in the memory bank. Something I thought I wanted, but talking to Patrick, he said, no, you know, just most people will go ahead and do that. Okay, simply recorded. Now, this is something I found very convenient and very efficient. When you go back to play it, all of your options, uh, the slow-mo, real-time, and time-lapse, are right there in the sub-menu. So you don't have to hop up and down the menu. Uh, you don't have to go to the top of the menu and then down to time-lapse, say. Uh, it's right there, and it's a perfect replica of the real time-lapse menu or the real uh, slow-mo menu. Simply go ahead, choose the option you want, hit record on your camera, and that same move is repeated as many times as you want. Now, I want to go ahead and start experimenting with some compositing and overlaying time-lapse with video, so this is going to be a really cool feature for me to use. Okay, that about wraps up part one, our first look at the features and functions of the Ditto Gear Omni Slider. And even though I'm going to save my conclusions for part three, I've got to say that so far I'm impressed. For a mid-priced motion control system, she's proving to be really nice, really easy to use, fully functioned, um, nicely designed, obviously a lot of photographer input into its design and features. So thank you for that, Patrick. Okay, on to part two. We'll take her on location. She's not a lightweight device, so there's some considerations with packing and transporting and setting up in the field that we'll take a look at. While we're down at Mount Rainier, we'll dive deeper into the menu. Uh, we'll look closer at motion recording and the time-lapse feature especially the uh, built-in intervalometer. It's pretty nice. So follow me on Twitter, uh, at Rick Photo. I'll announce when part two goes up. Thanks for watching. Happy shooting.